Thank you very much, President Stenger and Binghamton University for this honor. It is really a pleasure to be with all of you today. Dean Neiman and other distinguished university administration and faculty, family and friends of the graduates, and of course, the Binghamton University Harper College of Arts and Sciences graduating class of 2012. That has a great ring to it, doesn't it? The graduating class of 2012. Very special congratulations. <laughs> special congratulations to each and every one of you on a very important day. You know, 36 years ago, much longer than most of your lifetimes, I sat where you're seated now, figuratively speaking, of course. I was participating in a similar rite of passage. I was part of a graduation ceremony at a college just a bit west of here in North Dakota. And way back then, I'm sure I felt like many of you feel right now. I felt a sense of relief that I made the grades to graduate, a feeling of excitement to begin a new chapter in my life, and a sense of apprehension about whether I really had what it would take to be successful in the career that I had studied for. In your lives, this day really is one of the biggest days, one of those days that you'll remember even 36 years from now. Your achievement today and what it represents will be part of every job application you fill out, part of every resume that you send. It will be part of most of the conversations that you have when you describe yourself to a new acquaintance, talking about where you went to college. And it will be part of the quiet moments that you'll have now and then, when something or someone reminds you of this place and the people that you met here and that you learned from. In other words, you've forged a tie with Binghamton University, a nationally recognized university, and it is a tie that will stay with you and resonate for you throughout your lifetime. So it is quite appropriate that many people are here as part of today's celebration for you and about you, a celebration that recognizes and honors your achievements, marking a lifetime event that stays with you. The impact that Binghamton University has on each of you, whether you've studied in science or mathematics or humanities or social sciences, the impact on you and thousands of others has been made possible because of a lot of people. Some you know, some you'll never know. They are the alumni, the business community, the board members, and the families who believe in this university and who believe in you, the students and now the graduates that come through the doors of Binghamton University. They are the scores of people who gave their time or their expertise or their financial resources to help create and to sustain this institution for you and for others like you. The people whose names you don't know, but who know just how important you are and how important it is that you have the skills and the knowledge to do what you most want to do in your life, armed with the degree that each of you takes away from this academic setting. In other words, I want you to know that beyond your family and your friends, there are a lot of people standing right behind you who wish great success for each of you. And there's a lesson in that, I think. It is that throughout each of our lives, we are all helped. We're helped by the person who holds a door open when our arms are full, to the person who helps support our education. And as you go forward, there will be ample opportunities for you to help others achieve their dreams too. Well, when I was sitting where you are, I certainly didn't expect to see a day when a U.S. president would reach halfway across the country and offer me the opportunity to lead a federal agency that influences the health of more than 30 million people, from people who are waiting for heart transplants to people in rural communities waiting to find a doctor 
or a nurse to practice there. It is an incredibly challenging and, frankly, very demanding job. But doing it well can make a big difference to a lot of people. So the job is a privilege. And it's perhaps in no small part because of my serving in this position that I was invited to speak to you today. And the fact that, as they used to say in bygone, in bygone days, I'm a little long in the tooth, little old that is. It's likely that those who extended the invitation to me to be here with you had an expectation that I might have a few pearls of wisdom to share, some last minute observations and advice for the graduates as you close one chapter in your life and get ready to begin a new one. And I do. I have four pretty straightforward observations or lessons that I've learned across my career that have served me well. And so perhaps they'll serve you well too. And the good thing is these lessons come to you without your having to pay any more tuition or take a test about them. But they're lessons that might help you to make a little better the life that's right outside the doors waiting for you. So lesson one, out there and outside of Harper College of Arts and Sciences, it is all about change. So my advice, lean into it, lead it, don't shy away from it. And the implications of this lesson for you clearly start today. Think about the change that today brings to you. Today is the beginning of the time when you will no longer tell people that you go to Binghamton University. After today, this part of your life is spoken of in the past tense. You went to school here. So this day is about moving from what you've just accomplished to leaning into what may start for you as soon as this week. Two very different life chapters for you, one ending in celebration and another beginning with much anticipation. And beyond today, how has change different for you than it was for parents or for your grandparents? In many respects, it's very different. Change is very different in both trajectory and pace. Take your neighborhood, your sense of community. This college and this university has been sharply focused on ensuring that you are fully cognizant that the world is increasingly one big community, one big neighborhood. For example, a few years ago, a sneeze in Mexico City transported the flu to high school students in New York City most of whom had never ever visited Mexico. So we're all connected now. The world you're stepping into isn't the neighborhood where your parents grew up or where I grew up. Regardless of your postal address or your email address for the rest of your lives, far-flung places, people and things will influence and will be influenced by you in small and large ways. From my vantage point, I'd say how very exciting, the opportunity to shape change, to become part of something so interesting that is the lovely mosaic that are the people, the countries, and the culture that comprise this world. Seeing what we have in common and learning from what makes us different. My advice then, embrace change, lean into it, help to shape it for yourself, for your family, for your community, and even for the world. Lesson two, where others see limitations, each of you look for the opportunity. I'm from North Dakota, and I don't know why, but some people think of North Dakota as a little bit out of the way, a flat, plain patch of country. I'm sure that's not how any of you graduating today feel, but my point is flat and plain is what a lot of folks see when they drive across that state as they drive down the roads of that state. But others can view that exact same vista and see in it something very different. They see opportunity. Here's an example. Over 60 years ago, my dad, who was then a fairly young pilot, moved to North Dakota from a well-established aviation business in another state. He moved there because when he went to North Dakota to interview, he looked around. And from a pilot's perspective, he saw almost the entire state looking to him like one big runway where you could take off and you could land just about anywhere, where before good cars and good roads, airplanes could be a critically, part, critically important mode of transportation. 
And of course, these days, the FAA has us thinking just a little bit differently about landing and taking off anywhere. But that's change. And the point is, where other people saw limits, he saw a land and a sky filled with opportunity. Or it's a nurse who saw an opportunity in a public policy world on Capitol Hill, a place filled with lawyers and political science majors, which I am clearly not. But as that nurse, I thought a lot about the unique knowledge that I could bring to that setting, my healthcare experience, to help inform the development of health legislation. And by the way, when I got that first job in Washington, D.C., I took a serious pay cut to do it. A lower salary may have been a limitation for some, but that's not what I saw. I saw in that job an opportunity to use my knowledge and skills in an atypical way for a nurse. So what might look on the face of it like a limitation, if you look for them, there is a galaxy filled with opportunities waiting outside the doors of this building, opportunities in small rural towns and in large city centers. Where others see limitations, you look for the opportunities. Lesson three. Lesson three is something that I learned while working as a chief of staff for a United States senator. And that lesson is to replace in your attitude. And so replace it in your vocabulary, the words, I can't. Replace the words I can't with I can or we can. Meeting after meeting, day after day, I never once heard that U.S. Senator say I can't or we can't. So my observation is that when it comes to things important, I can't isn't the answer. What I've learned is that the real difference you make and how other people view you has a lot more to do with your attitude than it has to do with your money, your clothes, your car, or your house. This lesson is challenging, though, sometimes incredibly difficult because of, of what it requires of you to replace the words, I can't, in both your vocabulary and your attitude with those words, I can or we can. And for many of you, I'm sure you've already acquired the seeds of this attitude. It's really what helped you to get to this moment today. And last, lesson four. Find ways to lend a hand. And don't ever, ever hesitate to reach out for one when you need it. Some of the most important work you'll ever do is when you reach out and help others as a Girl Scout leader, as a Rotarian, or in some other way. In fact, it's that kind of work reaching out to help others that so often distinguishes unsung heroes in communities across the nation, but heroes nonetheless. As President Obama has been known to say, ordinary people often can be found doing extraordinary things. And staying in touch with the needs of others does take work. It isn't easy to do, but it's an abiding value that reflects who we are as Americans. I know this because I've had the opportunity to represent the United States at World Health Assemblies in Switzerland, at international meetings of health ministers in Mexico and elsewhere. And what you learn in these meetings is that people from all over the world look to the leadership of the United States because they respect our can-do attitude, our anything-is-possible approach, and our nation's history of generosity and caring for our neighbors. But our reputation as a nation isn't handed to us. Week after week, generation after generation, in small ways and large, people in this country did things and do things to earn that reputation. So going forward, each of you has days and weeks and years ahead of you filled with opportunities to make a difference, a difference in the lives of the people living next door, or the difference in the lives of people oceans away. Simply put, America's progress and America's promise depends on you and others like you. In keeping with the finest traditions of this academic institution, clearly from the class of 2012, we should be able to expect extraordinary things. But for now, today, you can just focus on the excitement of the day and celebrate what each of you has just accomplished, something really great. Today, your parents are particularly proud of you. Your aunts and uncles are proud of you. And even your brothers and sisters are proud of what you've accomplished. 
Congratulations to each of you and all of my best wishes. Thank you.